can see is there your confession. So they need you to appear to perfect the process. Otherwise, they would make it automated. Yeah? Okay. Well, thank you, Frank. All right. Good on you. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, these uh, these folks, they're, <clears throat> they're into bonds, bailments, and securities. Uh, and again, is when you're paying bailment, you're paying bail. Uh, we're going to take a next uh, caller. Uh, is from Truth Seeker. Truth Seeker, uh, you're on the air with Franco Collins. Hello? Hi. Hello, Frank? Yeah. Hello, Brian? Hello. Okay. Look, with the with the with the situation that I have, I'm not in foreclosure, anything of that sort. Now, what would be the appropriate approach approach using the Ecclesiastical Depot to assert my right of claim or my claim of right to property? Um, it's not a, I'm not in court, anything of that sort. But can I use that? Um, without having to be involved in court or any foreclosure, anything of that sort? Um, yeah, the, the short answer is, is you could, but, but, but this is what I'd say to, to, to folks at, at the moment. If you're not in a state of controversy at the moment and you're not in a state of, of like dire financial need because of where they put you, I would use the time to read rather than fashion a stick and poke the bear in the eye. That's not because the processes of anything we've described have any defects. It's merely when you do poke the, the bear in the eye, the bear is going to potentially take a swipe at you. And because we're dealing with crooks, you have to be prepared for the fact that what will crooks do, what will pirates do, if they see a little bit of treasure sitting there on the site. So I, I just, I say that with the greatest of respect because I don't wish anybody to, to go down the process of perfecting a legitimate claim of right only to find that it activates the pirates in this kind of mindset where they still think they can get away with literally anything, including murder. So my, my suggestion to do is this. If you're not in a situation of dire need, use the time to read. That's, that's my honest opinion at the moment, if I was you. And help others. Okay, okay. All right, All right. thank you very much. No, thank you. Um, Brian, if I could just really quickly answer a couple of questions in the chat. Absolutely, yeah. Um, question of, I define quite competent. Competent is listed under the uh, the canons. So if I've said the word quite competent, just please forgive me with the word quite and just go and have a look at the word competent. This is for guest 54. So please go and have a look under the positive law and you'll see those definitions are very clear. Um, another quick one, so very quick. Um, uh, Dickness says, uh, how did you get the Treaty of Lucifer? Um, how did you get it? The covenant of one heaven uh, is scribed by me but I assert whether you believe it or not that the words are not mine but inspired based on history and based on the events that take place now I don't claim to have any magical skill but having said that it might sound like a contradiction but I'm merely the writer of those words not the author of those words so that's the answer i'm not shaking it or, or avoiding it but that's the honest truth which is why my constant presence on this until the end of the year is actually an inhibition because i don't want anyone to be looking up to me i, I would like all of you to be adding your inspiration to the model because if, it, if you don't believe it's part of you then it's not going to survive. Um, there were a couple of quick ones as well. Um, uh, there was a question, would you send an EDP in English uh, or would you attempt to translate? I would try and translate if I was sending to Argentina. Um, 
Uh, there are Spanish versions that I've seen. A number of people have started to produce Spanish versions, so I'll look through and try and track down a latest version f for you. But uh, yes, I would I would definitely try and translate that before I'd send it. Um, and I think that were the questions I saw. Uh, yeah, we have a also yeah. is uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan's uh, calling in. Uh, so Ryan, you're on the air. Cosme. Hello, call. Frank. Hello, Brian. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Good. Ah, good. I um, I just wanted to uh, to share what I felt was a relevant uh, experience because uh, a week ago today I I had a, a court appearance and um, I wanted to get on the call and share it at the end of the day, but I literally sat in court all day and uh, ended up going to sleep because I was tired, so I didn't get a chance to call last week, but um. Just, uh, you know, you're talking about um, the blatant levels of, of incompetence of the of the people who are on the local levels and stuff like that. I, um, if if it's okay, I'd like to like to share just briefly the, the experience I, I had last week in the courtroom. I, um, well, okay, okay. I, uh, <laughs> I went in, the docket was a mile long. Um, so, of course, they make a point to address the people who are pleading guilty first because, I guess, you know, cha-ching, they get money in their account or whatever. And um, <laughs> so, of course, I was way down at the bottom of the docket. And since I had, don't live in that town anymore and had to take an Amtrak, I had somebody respectfully ask the DA if they could get me on the docket and address my address the matter, the case, then so I wouldn't have to pay for another train ticket to go back down there. And um, I, when I got up there, uh, you know, they they called my name, quote unquote, that they had on there, you know, all all caps name or whatever, and I said I'm here to resolve this matter. And I went up there and and respectfully stated that I was entering the bars holder of my own title. Um, and uh, when he he said, "Are you Jonathan Nicholas?" and then I I introduced myself as trust recipient, et cetera, et cetera, also known by the form. Um, you know, we're all familiar with the, with that uh, with that way to respond. And when I said all that, he uh, he immediately was he immediately said, "Okay, well, fine. I'm just going to continue your, your case for another month." <laughs> and I guess um, I mean I'm, I'm not I wasn't I have no goal or intention of of inciting fear or surprise or anything in any of these people because I was extremely respectful. I mean, there's a fine line between humility and subservience, um, but I was humble about it. I'm very respectful and honorable about it. And the judge didn't know what to do. And so he said, okay, I'm continuing your case. And I had a moment of forgetfulness that everything a judge says is an offer. And I d didn't think that that in that moment, I, I didn't think about that applying to a continuance also being an offer, so I didn't object. Yes, it is. Yeah. I should have objected in retrospect and then said, no, Your Honor, I'm objection. I'm here to handle the matter right now, so I don't have to pay to come down, back down here on a train another month. Um, but I just thought that, that, uh, that sharing that experience might be might be relevant because I've been you know, kind of keeping a lot of you guys posted on on what's been going on with, uh, with my matter. But the judge seems so baffled that he didn't even want to deal with with the way that I had presented myself in such a competent fashion. Well, this is the this is the the challenge to their system. They do not want any of us as competent, honourable people in their courts. The thing they fear the most are competent, honourable people. That's why they want to make unreasonable demands upon you in the hope it'll go back to the good old days when they had disinfo agents telling people not to go to court. <laughs> and of course, honourable people wouldn't go to court, would be considered um, uh, would be considered then that that would be the way that they could trap you by declaring that you were incompetent, yeah? Right, well, I, mean, uh, I think you were hoping that... I, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, go, fine. Oh no! I was saying I, I think he was because he, he he made this kind of like 
like, hey, hey, I got you kind of look on his face. And I was sure. thinking that I'm thinking that he was really hoping that I wouldn't be able to afford an Amtrak ticket to get back down there in a month, and therefore they'd be able to get me for failure, failure to appear or whatever. Yep. And, um, you know, of course, I'll figure something out, and I'll get back down there. And I'm, I'm wondering, of course, you know, there's probably a, a fair degree of likelihood that they're going to put some kind of little sticky note in the file about how I, you know, presented myself and what I said. And God only knows they may end up making a going through, jumping through hoops to try and make sure they get a judge to handle the docket on that particular court day uh, that is going to be a real – um, forget the, the term, but like you know, well, real hard, uh, hard, real hard, hard ass. Yeah. yeah, hard ass. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't well, know if it, I was okay to say. Well, let, let's let's do this. Let, let's wrap up for today. But just just say this: I really appreciate that you shared that with with everyone, and it's sharing the knowledge of people's actual experience is really useful. As I said, it's not about it's not about winning in a court. The winning is when you stand there honorably, competently and and are honest and know who and what you are. If enough people do that and don't believe the disinfo about running away, don't believe the disinfo that that uh, if you ignore them that you know it, it, it's your strength, it's not it emboldens them. These are cowards. the The process you went through was a very powerful first step. Ryan, at the end of the day, it's not going to be solved on one, one issue. What's happening at the moment is that as you and as many people are now starting to stand and be competent and honourable, it is changing people's opinion of the law because it's exposing these judges for what they are. It's exposing these prosecutors for what they are. And that is the exciting part. So keep it going. And Ryan, good luck to you. All right? Thank you, Frank. Good on you. You know, uh, you know Frank, that you see, there's, there's another macro aspect to what's actually going on with, uh, with everybody experiencing these court issues. Uh, I mean, it's one thing that when people are forced into a, a, a section of uh, compression or contraction, uh, where they're going through these issues. But the bottom line is this. You guys are out in the front lines. You, if you look at it, see see the positive laws on Eucadia, for an example, um, One Heaven, as uh, essentially is you're getting the education of law. You're getting the restoration of law. By going out there, now you're actually getting the experience in these courtrooms, like Frank says, standing in honor, once you stand in honor, you take the wind out of the sails of controversy. So uh, I just wanted to add that, that again, as you, you guys are getting frontline experience and don't get uh, intimidated. Again, everything is an offer and uh, you're getting critical experience of uh, how you can get together and then help others. Uh, we're probably just going to take a few more calls because we're, uh, we're now sitting at 10.52 and uh, we've got a few minutes left. So uh, we're going to uh, take a next call from, if I can scroll up here, is we have a, a better way again. Better way, uh, you're on the air. Okay, hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, just have one more clarification to make if you don't mind. Sure. Um, with uh, my appeal, and I'm understanding that I still would need to go through with the appeal, so my first submission to the court would be the um, deed of rights and um, what is it, um, redemption, on oh, no, rights and possession. Is that correct? Because I know there's also um, paper, you know, um, EDP that goes to the court. So my question is that being that I am doing an appeal, my first thing would be to send in the um, deed of rights and possession. Is that correct? And nothing else. No, no. Well, there, there are work. there are several documents with a with a proclaiming your land. There's the deed of rights and possession that goes with the survey, and also goes with the uh, lawful possession. Yes. Right. Yeah, all of those. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you'd be sent to land titles and you'd be skimming to the court. And the substance of your appeal is, well, um, 
I possess the land lawfully anyway. That's the formation of your of your appeal, and uh, see how they take it there. And uh, look, I, I wish you were dealing with 